this complicated unit of ball and socket joint. It moves around in, in a whole host of directions. But there's an awful lot going on in the hip, as in every muscle coming up from the leg, coming down from the body, they all sort of connect and join there. The hip really is a seat of all your power. You know, we do with martial arts in here, um, mostly. And it's all about turning the hip, generating power from the hip. Lifestyle, you know, we sit basically on our arses most of the day. Um, not through, well, maybe not through choice. So you work eight hours at a desk, you sit in the car, you sit on the train, whatever else. Um, it's not always through choice. You, you're forced to sit at your desk, you're forced to sit on, on public transport in the car. You know, um, all this static. Stationary lifestyle that we have, this what do they call it, sedentary lifestyle. Um, the hips get weak, the hips get tight. You're constantly, if you're sitting, you see here the hip flexor at the front here, that's now shortened, which means everything on the front leg will shortened. The, the glutes are ha and aren't having to do any work at all, so they go, they get tired, they go, well, not tired, they go to sleep, um, they atrophy, they just don't work right. So, this is a drill I have a lot of people doing. Um, it's a mobility drill and it's a muscle activation drill. All right. It's based off the bridge, adding in a bit of internal rotation at the hip. Um, I originally got this from, it's actually a combination of two moves that I got from a yoga instructor named Anne and Dempsey. She studies somatics as well. Um, she showed me a variation on the bridge that comes from the somatics and she showed me how they do of internal rotation from the bridge position. You put the two moves together, you've got a fantastic mobility drill. All right. We'll go through the two moves first, and then we'll show you how we put them together. All right. And then you can play around with them in your own time. So we start lying on the back. All right. Have the feet flat on the floor, fairly close to the hips. Now, usually when you bridge, it's all about lifting the hip up. What I want you to focus on is forget about the hip. I want you to push the knees away from you, okay? So you're pushing the knees out towards the wall and use that to lift you up. In doing that, you get a greater stretch in the hip flexor. It's not a real tight stretch, it's not like an arr kind of stretch, it's more of a gentle teasing out of the hip, all right? If you flick back to the video we did on the, the, the blue tack, this is what we're doing here. We're gently prizing out that blue tack. We're not going for a big stretch and snapping it, we're just gently teasing it out, alright? So you push those knees out, usually just hold it for a second, and now, one of the key points with the somatic style movements is that it's lazy, and this is how I'm describing it to me, it's lazy exercise. It's meant to be almost effortless. If you really fire into it, you're not doing somatics. Um, the bridge can be done with a huge amount of effort, but it's for a different purpose. Right now we're looking at mobility, so it's just gently stretch it out and back down. Don't worry too much about squeezing the glutes. Don't worry about any tension in the body. Just focus on pushing those knees away to the wall. You see how they drift forwards and back. You won't get nearly as high as you would on a regular bridge. But don't worry about that. That's not the point here. Okay? As you are lifting, you are activating the glutes nice and gently. You are stretching all of the front here. Okay? Now, internal rotation of the hip looks like this. Just drop the knee in towards the opposite ankle. Okay? Every time you do this, you'll feel a stretch coming down your IT band here. You can see that. You'll see a stretch coming down the IT band, a little bit into the hip flexor, a little bit into the glute. Alright, as so that drifts in there. Okay? Now, if you combine those two movements, you lift. As you lower, you drift in. You lift. As you lower, drift the knee in. Lift. And down. Okay. Lift. And down. When you lift, focus on pushing that knee forwards. And then let that same knee then fall inwards. Okay. Push the knees forwards to lift you. 
then let it drift in. Push the knee forward to lift you, let it drift in. Okay? Lift and down. Nice, easy, gentle movement. Okay? A few repetitions of that. Quite often I do this with big, particularly beginners. When they first come in, the first experience of the kettlebell, they've had to learn the swing, their backs get real tight. Um, finish the session with this, bang, the back's nice and loose again, they feel great. Um, quite often if you've done a heavy few sessions, particularly a lower body day, your heavy session, finish off with this, it will just loosen everything out and you don't get that, that stiffness, that tightness, the, the back locking up. All right? um, yeah, very quickly that will help loosen out the hips. Play around with it, add it into your routine, see how it works for you. Don't force the movement, the whole thing is to do gentle, gradual progression. You shouldn't even notice it hardly, okay? It's a lovely one at the beginning of a session you all, but I find it best placed at the end as a cool down as to finish off with. Alright? With more information on the website, wg-fit.com, um, we'll have an article posted up there as well. Alright? Thanks for your time.